aggressive edge guard. Oh, first but, of all, shout outs to like the skateboards in the back. Right? I just want to so say, cool. like, such a cool design. Street Fighter 6 coming out this Friday. Boom, bam, ba. Oh, let's go. All right. Starting off in our game one, we're semis uh, starting with Tilda and Peko. Today going the ever classic Diddy Kong finally coming back from finals hell. And he is here with a vengeance, wanting to get a really nice placing at Xeno uh, 295 today. And Tilde kind of popping out a little jump scare moment, honestly. Yeah, really, Tilde, we don't see don't see him coming out to Xeno quite as often, but always a treat. But right now, Peko looking to make short work of Tilde's first stock, already 93%. And I just love this pressure using the banana at the ledge for these ledge trap scenarios, only 19% on Pekka right now. Absolutely, and again, finally, Tilde actually getting a little bit of combo started here. Lovely is the reflector that we're seeing here, the frame reflector taking some extra little bit chip damage as well, but Tilde's at 122%, that's really scary. That's really anything that Pekka wants to do. Anything Diddy can, uh, can really achieve right here, back here in the, in the air right here. A ledge situation where you see the banner in hand on ledge, but thankfully, uh, Tilde able to find the stage relatively safely, and hopefully able to start his own combo with these, with these down airs. Yeah, and such a great angle from Tilde. You could see Pekka was looking for that forward tilt that we saw, that we see him go for so often. Tilde right now with getting the percent a little bit back into his favor. Pekka going for a lot of these aerials on shield. Got to be careful, but the up smash scoop. Pekka taking first blood. Absolutely, you know. Oh, that was a very just just quick work of Pekka in that yeah. moment. Drop down, you have iframe so active. What are you gonna do? You're gonna hit me? No. Impossible. Thank you for the instant replay technology brought to you by House of 3000. As we see that beautiful side be into the back here. But as we see, now we see a complete reversal. Yes, a complete reversal of, uh, of uh, the first part of this game where now it's Peko in the deficit. Yep, and I mean, that can really be all it takes, especially from Tilde, one of the most uh, proficient players when it comes to maximizing Falco's advantage. All it can be is one hit and you're taking 70 for it. Getting the drag down into the up throw, <gasps> up air. Tilde taking uh, Peko's second stock relatively early. Very, very early as well. Right off the top, you couldn't really do anything about that. Peko kind of has to hold that as we go into our yeah. last stock of Hope. Thankfully, you know, just game one, definitely a warm up stage right here. One more uh, warm up as we see for Peko. But X and the monkey flip come into stage relatively safely. Now, do we have to hold center stage? I definitely think so. Because now, once you get to this situation where you're off stage, you see Tilde with all this pressure with the back air, the back with the back air with the down air with forward air as well and this reflector also to boo and pressure is absolutely the name of the game right now ma you could see tilde going for a lot more of these aggressive options catching peko off guard peko of course not being able to really rely on the banana too much because of that frame one reflector and even not even the reflector just catching it straight out of the air suddenly it is tilde's ledge trap option Oh man, I'm seeing both these with forest smashes come out and miss just barely uh, missing their mark. No way, stop. What? Way. That was a the big I, scoop. I got I got Falco completely bamboozled. All the way back. Said you're going out there. Complete bamboozle. First of all, they, props to till day one, just to fight that mix up. Because I was like, oh, you're just gonna go for up B, call it a day, you're coming back. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Peko is probably pissing the same thing. And then, boom, you die. You just die. <laughs> I see. Oh, I see. I thought that was a J. <laughs> a G. A G. A G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Petco just like, bro, what? Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of what I was saying before. What are you rolling your eyes at, Tilde? Is Tilde is like playing this aggressive game plan, you know, Pekko usually so good at whiff punishing, but the aggression from Tilde, and especially at all these like unconventional angles at and timings, especially in disadvantage, Tilde's just been able to get away with murder. Absolutely. Um, I mean, right here you're seeing a complete change in, change in a stage. We are on, on Smashville, and I... I know this is what Peko wants to go for, but I've seen Tode absolutely wreck wonders on this stage. I see with that, with that middle platform doing so well for him sometimes. But regardless, what's going to be consistent is that Reflector is going to be completely negating what Diddy wants to do. Every every game plan Diddy has, gone and dusted with just that Fangorn Reflector at the backside. But Peko, regardless of that uh, this advantage, is going in with these uh, with these uh, high pressure situations where we're just going to keep contesting t uh, Tode in the air and kind of beating him out a little bit. Yeah, and I do absolutely agree regarding the Smashville pick because, you know, Smashville typically is going to be exacerbating that stage control. Mm -hmm. 
And but Tilde right now with the stage control again, finding it's the same that thing. kill. It's the same thing. That happened literally last game. History Force repeats Armor. itself. It truly does, and sometimes we don't learn. But Peko kind of has to hold that once more. Hopefully, we don't see the same thing happen again because the way that this platform works, Tilde can absolutely, as you saw, use it as an extension of your own hitboxes and your own range, and just kind of abuse it right into that into that uh, ceiling blast zone. But with that lead, now we see again Tilde is kind of reverting switching into his own favor. Where suddenly, where we saw Peko kind of dominate in the first part of the game, it's reversing again into Tilde's favor. Yep, all right, getting a little bit of a grab there with the monkey flip, but the reflector coming out once again. This center platform doing so well for Tilde. Only getting the, the soft hit of the back air, but how are you going to get off the ledge against Tilde? Is going to be able to do so with the double jump forward air. Absolutely, and this is where kind of Tilde does very well. Presses you with that shield, and not that shield, haha. Presses you with that laser so you don't come down to the, to the ledge, you don't want to get hit by any more chip damage. And then boom, Tilde reads what your approach is in that moment. So now suddenly, Tilde up another stock, just like very similar to game one. And Peko has to do so much work to kind of make it back into his own favor. Now thankfully, Peko learned from his mistakes, getting off that platform once you see uh, Tilde really start to abuse these up airs into the, and these up tilts as well. And once again, these aggressive options from Tilde in the disadvantage, just getting him right back in so he can start putting on more of that extra credit. Peko finally starting to adapt a little bit with the Z drop. You can see he was looking for a down air after the fact, but unfortunately getting the trade, not finding it. Oh no, an unfortunate air dodge from Tilde. I giggle. That was kind of funny. Funny. A little funny. I was just then a drop. Goodbye. Yeah. Honestly, I think if Tilde was facing the other way, he would have just Gotten to ledge. Gotten to ledge, yeah, but I, I agree. He bounced off. It is what it is, and, what, and you still have a really good amount of extra credit in favor for Tilde, where you have Peko at almost 100%. Almost 100%. And anything you really do here, you can get a nice drag down to back, uh, drag down down there into up air into back air. You can definitely get all these kind of options going for yourself as Peko's percentage only goes higher and higher, but at the same time, Rage is building up. Absolutely, the Reflector trying to disincentivize the grounded approach option. You know uh, Falco has amazing anti-airs. All right, just a little bit of fainting coming out from Tilde, the walk back. But Peko finding the first hit here in this scrapping situation. Amazing Firebird angle once again. Tilde's recovery is always on point. Ooh. Absolutely. Oh, excellent grab to four throws. It could be really huge for Peko. Can we get another banana toss? Oh, you saw the vision! Payback. He saw the vision, but Peko was right in the future. He did. But uh, the fade back from Tilde was amazing. You could see everyone in the world thought he was trying to cross up. Mm, nope, he's gone. Never to be seen again. Goodbye. Because he got hit by forward air. Look away, look at the way that Diddy looks at the camera. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, production. Look, 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 look at Diddy, look at Diddy, look at Diddy. I think it's the kill. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, holy Peko, absolutely. Yes. I'm next. That's so funny. <laughs> He's like, I did that. <laughs> All right, we're back to sleepy time. Uh, TNC, of course. All right, yeah. TNC is the next stage of choice, which could really go either way. Falco. Loves platform extensions. That's what he's. That, that's what Tilde's gonna be going for a lot of times on these extra surface areas given by the, the triple platform stage we do have right now. Um, even in double plat, Tilde kind of kind of rocks the world, right? As you can see right here, right now. When we get to that FD like platform, that FD uh, setup, that's where Peko can really abuse it. But until then, oh right, here we're here now. Yeah. No platforms. Yeah, and I do really love this pick from Tilde. Like you were saying before. Having more of that surface area on the platform, we could see in game one, Tilde was just kidding. Peko finding uh, first stock, but Peko in game one was struggling to find. Oh my god! Time I is, can't. Time is a flat circle. We can't. <laughs> we can't commentate this. Because no. It's like, I'm sick. I'm sick of you both. I hope you guys read this vod back out. You know I'm sick of you both. <laughs> Regardless, Tilde coming in real hot from the Angel platform, getting that sweet, sweet, uh, sweet spot down there, and getting the kill right there from Peko. Peko, all that hard work you did, gone and dusted. Boom and bop. 
Two platforms are going to be giving uh, Tilde the advantage, though. As we see the extensions come out, you see the really awkward but a Chuba angle that Pekka was able to pull off with the uppy recovery, though. Yeah, and now we're really starting to see the uh, stage pick come in for Tilde. In game one, we saw you know Pekka really struggling to keep that stage control. In game two, Smashville kind of did that for him with the, uh, the monoplat. But now that you have all of this space to play with, Pekko has just not been able to really keep the advantage in his favor until they is thriving on all this open space. He really is, as I'm saying, the, the, the triple plat and the double plat setup is so good for Falco. It's just so much area for him to cover, so much aerial space to just abuse. And what can Diddy do besides attempt to do a banana and into a reflector or try to get these monkey clips going and active, right? So at the same time, Pekko just has to work a little bit harder, has to work a little bit uh, smarter here to outplay Tilde the way he did in the first 10 seconds, and then, you know, Tilde was like, yeah. <laughs> funny. Haha, funny. Uh, yeah, this is right where Pekka was good. Okay. Pekka trying to use this banana right now, and just using it as an empty threat, just holding it in the hand, making sure that Tilde has to keep the reflector in the forefront of his mind, but just one up tilt is really all it takes for Pekko to be taken to 69 right now, looking for these F-tilts, once again, is able to find it there, and the down air just reaching right through that main stage platform. Pekko, you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was really a cool. That was move. actually really cool. It just, just able to get the constant two frames and able to predict the, the Firebird, especially for that down air, was excellent stuff from Pekko. Now the patience here has to be uh, has to be oh. worn, right? You have to be super patient here because you are in the deficit. Percentage-wise, you have a little bit of rage build-up so you can kind of, you know, really bully Falco, especially with no platforms for to really run around on. Falco has nowhere to go, has nowhere to really um, escape these options but the way Tilde plays, that's the that's the thing here. Now you gotta deal with the specialist. Yeah. And you can see Pekko trying to play around that reflector, trying to bait it out, trying to punish things like forward air, but yeah, Tilde, Tilde just really had that game in the palm of his hand the whole time. Yeah, uh, even even when we did didn't have but even when we didn't have like the platforms and stuff where Pekko could uh, abuse that situation where it's like, you can't run around and I can just follow you wherever you go. Tilde was already up, but up was already in a really good vintage state and didn't have to do too much in order to secure the game for himself and continue on throughout winners. But really solid run from Pekko, however, today. So.